That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Hey, my brothers and sisters, I hope this day finds you well. I know it's been a while, I know it has. Um, I don't post as much as I used to. Honestly, it's because I, I, I've already been put in the penalty box by Google, via YouTube, Pinterest. Pinterest is really bad. You guys don't talk enough about Pinterest, but they're, they're horrible. <laughs> Facebook, and of course, Instagram, since they're connected. My, my reach is, is stifled because it's obvious that, you know, the best way to really proliferate a lie is to ensure that nobody can hear the truth. So if there's only one message and that one message is a lie, it will become people's reality. This has been true historically. This is what tyrants have always done. And in addition to indoctrinating children and then turning them on, on, on their neighbors and on their own uh, family members, um, that's another strategy. Uh, they also, uh, you know, tear down history. You know, we got to revise history. These are all tactics that, if you look at it historically, they're always used. Everything is in cycles, and everything is repeated. Right there, there can be some components that that are different, like as far as geographical region, as far as um, you know, what time in history, the technology that's available. Uh, things of that nature, but it's the same thing over and over, which is why it's another reason why I don't post as much because it's the same stories over and over and over and over. I'm, it's, it's, I find it interesting because so many people I've realized, and this is actually, you know, what, what made me realize this was I was really trying to see, you know, what was going on because I was taken aback by by what happened on October 7th, of course, and that, and that level of barbarism is, is, is horrible, but it really is no different than the barbarism that's been rising globally. And it's, it's you know, of course, put on display and it's raw and, and, it's, and the people that are engaging in it, they're not even trying to hide it. Not only are they not trying to hide it, they're celebrating it, they're, they're, they're capturing it and, you know, on video, and they're disseminating it themselves because they're proud of, of, of the evil that they're doing. They're proud of their own barbarism. But to me, it's the same as abortion. If you can tear a baby apart in the womb, which should be the most protected place for the baby, it's designed to be a safe space. You know, remember safe spaces? You guys need safe spaces. That womb is literally the safe space for that baby to grow. And you're, you're invading that safe space and then crushing and ripping them apart and then scraping them out. That's just as barbaric to me as beheading a baby and burning people alive and raping women. It's just as barbaric. It's just, you're okay with this barbarism under this context, but not with this. See, I'm not for any of it. My, my conviction is consistent across the board because I have integrity. But you don't if you're for abortion, but then against the barbarism that you saw in Israel, then I would question your integrity. Because if you're if you're against that level of violence, you're against violence at all, you should be against violence across the board. Unless, of course, that person is using violence to defend themselves, then that's the only time that that violence is justified only in self-defense. But I'm getting off topic. When I saw that, I was taken aback by the response. Because I, I would believe that looking at something like that, witnessing that, everybody who's decent, everybody who's, who has even a, a minimal level of wisdom and intelligence, if they have a heart, if they're compassionate at all, that we would all be on the same team. We would all be on the same side immediately against what happened on, on October 7th. And that wasn't the case globally. It wasn't the case in, in the United States. It wasn't the case in Germany, in France. And I'm, I'm watching all of these places and I'm like, I don't understand. I, I don't understand. Have we been that divided to where when something is clearly black and white, evil, good, when something is that clear, how we're not all on the side of good, how we're all not rushing to condemn those actions, no matter who engages in them, 
Once again, my convictions are consistent across the board. If it were American soldiers who were doing that, I would call for for them to be, you know, you know, the full extent of the law. They need <laughs> they need to face consequences. I would be against it, even if it was against somebody that is our political enemy, even if it's against somebody that is, you know, from a military standpoint is our enemy, I would still be against it. I would be against American soldiers going into China and doing this, I'd be against it. I'd be against Ukraine going into Russia. I'd be against Russia going into Ukraine. I'd be against it under any circumstances you can imagine, I'd be against it. I would just be against it because it is just evil and I'm against evil, period. I don't care what your political party is. I don't care what your ethnic origin is. I don't care what your gender is. I don't care what your sexual preference is. I don't care. I would never condone those actions against any other person, period. But see, my convictions are consistent across the board, which is why I'm against abortion, because to me, it's the same exact thing. It's the same exact thing. Hamas invading Israel was the same as those, I can't remember what the tool is called, it's escaping right now, invading the womb and tearing the baby apart. Surprise attack. I'm against it. See, so I guess I shouldn't be surprised. I guess I shouldn't have been taken aback because it is the same thing, but I still was. I still thought that people would witness that and, and it would galvanize us all on the same side against that, right? I shouldn't even have to make a distinction between Hamas and Palestine. I shouldn't even have to make that distinction. But these are the, these are, are the games that, that apparently the leftist progressives play in the Democratic Party as well. They, they play with words to shape reality. They play with words. And, and they want everything to be subjective. They want everything to be a gray area so that they can justify wanting to, to do things that are morally corrupt. Because if things are subjective, then it's like, ah, oh, well, you know, maybe not in this circumstance, but in this circumstance, but if, 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 if we have these components, then it isn't. But if we have these components, then it is. Now, what I actually want to talk about today, really, I know that's you know, a long introduction there, but I, it's been, since October 7th, there's been some, some I've had some, some real big revelations. Like, like one came from, from, from Dennis Prager. And you know, very learned man, very well traveled. I believe that that he has a great deal of wisdom. He may not agree with everything that he says, but you can't say that he's a stupid person. You can't say that he's not intelligent. You can't say that he's not well read. He's not well traveled. He speaks multiple languages. I, you know, truth matters, right? <laughs> not the subjective truth that the leftist progressives live in, but objective truth that we all live in, regardless of whether we believe in it or not. Because I've said this before: the truth is the truth, and it doesn't require our belief in it to be true. That's actually what makes it true. You cannot believe it, but it doesn't change what it is, right? So he said, and I just put it in perspective, he said that liberty is a value, not an instinct. And I thought that that was really profound when you step back and you ask like, how are so many people going along with things? How can so many people just give away their liberty without even batting an eye? How can so many people want to be controlled, want to have their lives lived for them as long as they have the perception of ease or the perception of safety? And it's because liberty is a value and you can share a value or not share a value. You can have a value or not have a value. You can acquire a value or abandon a value, but an instinct you can't, like the survival instinct, nothing you can do about it. You can train to override certain aspects of it, but it's still going to hit you. You can just manage it. But liberty, liberty is a value. Because think about this, from a, from a survival aspect, going along with the crowd is actually a part of your survival instinct. To not be excluded, to not be ostracized. That counters our survival instinct because we know that there's strength in numbers. So when people go along to get along, that's a part of their survival instinct, that's an instinct. 
giving up their liberty for safety or giving up their liberty to be accepted, that's actually the instinct, not the liberty itself. The liberty itself is a value. One that 2020 showed us that from in, in, the, in the land of the free and the home of the brave, liberty is, as a value is not shared by everyone in the country that's supposed to be all about liberty. 2020 showed us that. And this is what dictators bank on. This is what the leftist progressives are banking on. This is what the Democratic Party is banking on. This is why they've broken themselves in half to take over media, to take over entertainment, and take over education. This is why. Because their message is not truth. Their message is founded on a lie. But if all you hear is the lie, or if they get you early before you even understand what truth and lies are, they can shape that reality and create soldiers for their army of, of death. They're all just death worshipers. Anyway, so what I want to show you really today is just, you know, how I do my segments, all the different places that I go to get information, because there's a lot, right? There's a lot of information. Now, I tend to lean towards people who will give you their references, who will give you their receipts, who will give you the links so you can, you know, they want you to go and research. I tend to gravitate towards people like that because they understand that, hey, I could be wrong and I want you they respect your own knowledge, your own autonomy, your own individual sovereignty. They want you to view the same information that they're viewing because you may see something different. You may come to a different conclusion and they're okay with that. The ones who only want you to believe them will tend not to give you those things and tend not to encourage you to think for yourself. Quite the contrary. They will encourage you just to believe them because they're somehow, maybe because they have a white coat on and they're a doctor or a scientist, or maybe they're in a position of power, an elected official, or maybe they're an entertainer who has a lot of influence, you're encouraged to believe that these people are telling you the truth and they have your best interest at heart simply because of the positions that they've acquired. They're a human being just like you, just as fallible, just as broken, but because they've attained these positions of power and influence and status, you're supposed to just believe them, which of course is absurd. Right. It's, it's absolutely absurd. But that's what that's what you're encouraged to do. So if I'm listening to somebody like Cenk Uger on on uh, the Young Turks or I'm listening to Ben Shapiro with Daily Wire, if you if you listen to them over in a long period of time, you can see certain patterns start to pop up. You look at the way they present things. You look to see if they've given you their references. You look to see if. If they're, you know, what's their emotional stability? What's the, how do they present? Um, are they composed? Are they quick to anger? You know, are they emotionally volatile? Um, are they consistent with their arguments? Are they consistent with their worldview over time? Because these people are, you, can, you have video clips so you can go back and look and see what they said, you know, five years ago, 10 years ago, two years ago, three years ago. You can, you can look at those things and you can see patterns pop up. And that's what you should be looking for. You shouldn't be going like, oh, well, I'm a conservative, so I'm just going to believe what Ben Shapiro says and, and whatever, whatever he does. He's infallible, and he would tell you not to do that, which is one of the reasons why I listen to him, because he at least respect, respects my own intelligence. And then I'll look at you know something from the Young Turks, and I see a particular pattern popping up. I find consistencies, inconsistencies on that side because they live in that gray area. They're quick to emotion. They're more on the liberal, well, leftist, liberal, neoliberal, let's call it neoliberal, that neoliberal leftist progressive side. And their arguments sometimes run into each other. I, you, it's, it's almost like they have this, this, this very competent, very wise thought, but they won't, they won't follow that train. They won't pull on that string to its fruition because it'll conflict with, with something else that they want to have happen that, has, that isn't based in reality. It's more based in, in, in how they feel the world should be. And that's what I've seen kind of pop up over there. They'll drop some jewels, they'll drop some truth, right? You, you look at Bill Maher, Bill, Bill Maher, he'll say some things that are true, but at his foundation, he also says things that are horrible and monstrous, like he's okay with, with the, he recognizes that abortion is murder, and he says he's okay with it. He's okay with that kind of murder. And so, once again, I would say like what I was saying in the very beginning, well, if you're okay with, with, with murder under those circumstances, then 
why would you ever condemn Hamas or be against them at all? You're okay with murder under certain circumstances. That means that you're okay with murder, right? You can't be mostly okay with murder or mostly not or mostly against murder. That means that you're actually not against murder. It's like mostly peaceful means that it's not actually peaceful. Like, let's say that I'm, I'm married 20 years. And let's say I only cheat on my wife once. Am I a mostly good husband? Because I only did it once in 20 years? <laughs> no, I'm a bastard, right? <laughs> I'm not a good husband. So there's no such thing as mostly peaceful. There's no such thing as mostly good. Mostly good means you're not good. Do you understand that? So that's how they play on words. Like we understand that it's, you know, we just don't want to call it a riot. So we'll call it a mostly peaceful protest because language is important. Anyway, so I look at, I look at multiple sites. So I just want to show you just real quickly and then I'll sign off just some of the places that I go and that I encourage you to do the same thing. Okay. So the first one, first place that I go, well, not the first, but the first one that I'm going to show you, because sometimes I go in different order. And then there's also some uh, social media influencers that that I'll follow. And I'm mostly on Instagram. Um, as I told you, Facebook has put me into the penalty box and my reach has, has been woefully diminished. Um, so I don't go there that much. And I've never been in really into Twitter and now X. People on there. So I'll, I'll go to Twitter a little bit because all it does, once again, is just reinforce my assertion that people care more about their own worldview than they do about the truth. That's what I that's what I find on X. I scroll through and you'll see, you know, things coming out of the White House, things that Joe Biden is Joe Biden is saying, like he's on Twitter, he's or X, he's not, you know, somebody's doing it for him. You see what Gavin Newsom is is, is posting and all these things. And they're never founded in truth. These so leaders are supposed to serve the people. And our leaders are serving themselves, which is why everything is going downhill. And the people who would rather just be included, right, as, as an instinct, they wanna be included. They wanna be kept safe. They're abandoning liberty as a value. And so they keep voting these people who are serving themselves who don't serve them, they keep voting them into power. And the truth isn't changing these people's minds and they're just slaves to their worldview. And so when I scroll through X, I see that on full display. I see it on full display because the truth should undergird every conversation that anybody ever has because you can't have morality without truth and you can't have justice without truth. And when I say that, it's implied that I mean objective, not subjective truth, not my truth, your truth. That's a ridiculous concept. Once again, that's the leftist progressives using words to try to reshape reality. Because what you're saying is that my truth is my reality and therefore you have to participate in it. Well, that's divisive right off the gate, right? <laughs> it's all gonna be automatically divisive because everybody then is gonna have their own reality. And, and that's, when you pull that to fruition or one of the symptoms of that is going to be pronouns. That was just the logical progression of my truth was going to go to my pronouns. This is my reality and you have to participate. And if you don't, it's actually violence against me. So now words are violence because as I said, they will take language and just reshape it. They'll change the definitions of words at the drop of a hat as long as they can use it to support their subjective truth. Right. So you can see what's what's what the problem is. You can see what the cancer is, but people don't want to cut it out. They want it to grow. They vote for it. And not only that, but they they've been weaponized against people who don't want that cancer to grow. And so when I scroll through X, that's what I see. So I don't I don't make it very far. And sometimes I'll make I'll make comments. And really, I'm just trying to bring add a little bit of truth to it, a little bit of levity sometimes. But on Instagram, there's some people that, you know, like right wing angels is a good one. He, he really he finds local stories that you aren't going to see in the mainstream media. He finds local stories that contradict the prevailing narrative that the leftist media puts out. Actually, I shouldn't even say leftist media because all mainstream media is at fault, even Fox. So all of them are leftist media is a bit crazier, but mainstream media 
as a whole has abandoned their journalistic integrity, generally speaking. You may find some lights in there, but generally speaking, it's all dark. It simply is. So that's why like, I'll follow like, Anomaly. Really, really good with research. I, 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 got hit, um, I got hit to him in 2020. He was bringing, he was bringing receipts. He was bringing papers, like watching Alex Jones with all these papers. He was bringing papers. He's, he's not just somebody who's just spouting things. He actually researches and then shows you his research because he's, he respects you as an autonomous being and wants you to take a look as well. He's just trying to spread truth at, to the best of his ability. Now, we're, we're, we're all not infallible. We're all broken, right? We're not perfect. So we can make mistakes, which is why if you have people privy to what you're researching, you include them in that conversation. It's very inclusive. <laughs> the, the real inclusion, right? The real diversity of thought, right? So Anomaly is one of them. Right Wing Angel is one of them. Um, the Officer Tatum. Yeah. Um, so there's, there's quite a few. Um, there, there, are a lot of, there are a lot of Christian influencers that I watch as well. Now, mind you, once again, Christian influencers where truth is what matters most because truth is God. So God is what should matter most. Truth and God. Because God is good. God is truth. Truth is good. It's the way that works. So they just, boom, the one and the same. Some Christians aren't that way. Just like some conservatives aren't that way. So I'm for truth. If there's a leftist progressive out there who's speaking the truth, it's the truth. Because I'm, I don't engage in idolatry. I don't care if it's, oh, well, it's coming from the left, so I'm not going to believe it. No, that's not how I work. If it's the truth, it's the truth. Like I said, if Bill Maher is saying the truth, it's the truth. If Jimmy Kimmel is saying the truth, it's the truth. Although you'd be hard pressed to find when that is, but the truth matters more than anything. So this one I'm gonna leave you with is I'm just gonna show you some of the, some of the sites that I go to. So first one I'm gonna show you here is uh, Ground News. Now the thing I like about Ground News is, as you can see here with this story, it'll have left, center, and right. So you could find, like if you go to the left side, maybe you'll find AP News, maybe you find HuffPost, that kind of thing. Um, the center is usually like the hill. Um, and then on the right side, that could be Daily Wire, you know, things of that nature. So this is kind of like a, like a, like a universal media watering hole that's broken down into left, center, right. Now, you may disagree with how it's broken down. You may think that AP News is more center, you know, what have you, but at least they, they attempt to give you multiple stories from, from different viewpoints, different worldviews. And so you can read an article from CNN and read an article from, from Daily Wire and on the same subject matter and go, oh, okay, I can see how, you know, see look at the verbiage that they use. Maybe you get some different information on one than you do the other. So that's why I like it. That's what I like about this. So you can see with this story here, there's just a left and a center. They didn't find a right. Um, and then all the way through here, you can just see if there's like more stories here. So on this mobile um, and resilient military, the US military is placing a new emphasis on ground troops for Pacific defense. Since the white here is bigger, you can see there's more stories available for the center and then more stories available in relation to um, the right, more stories available on the left. You see, because it's color coded. And then if there's nothing for the right, like when the US and uh, Chinese finance uh, ministers are opening talks to lay the groundwork for Biden G meeting, all you have is left and center here. So this is, this is a good spot, and they have a mobile app as well. This is a good spot to, to, to get articles from multiple sites and you can compare them. So I like that a great deal. So there's that one. And then there's Young Turks, TYT. Then uh, Pew Research Center, I'll go here. I also go to um, Statista, I'll go there as well. Um, I didn't include that one here, but you got the Pew Research here. There's, there's some good stuff um, here as well. 
Um, there's also World Demeter, there's John Hopkins. So there, I'm not giving you everything, but I just wanted to show you like how many places that I actually go to. And then uh, we have GB News. This is Britain's news channel. And I also, I will go to Sky News Australia as well, um, BBC uh, as well. But this is one you may not have heard of. So this is Britain's news channel. And then this one here is uh, Red Voice Media. So I, got, I go to um, more sites on the right than I do the left, but it's still good to have, it's still good to look at the left. Like even if you're conservative, don't put yourself in an echo chamber where you're always just going to the right side. That's what I like about ground news is that I can see center, I can see right, I can see left. So make sure that, that you're not just listening to people that you agree with or listening to people that say things that you like. And then uh, Rebel News here, they do a lot of good work, especially um, when the World Economic uh, Forum is going on in Davos. They do a lot of good uh, coverage of that. And then uh, OAN. Newsmax, PragerU, as I was talking about Dennis Prager, Gateway Pundit, Front Page Magazine. You know what's interesting about Front Page Magazine is that if I post to Pinterest and, and I post an article, like let's say I do a segment and I got the information from Front Page Magazine as well as other sources, like let's say that like I get uh, information from CNN and the information from Front Page Magazine, I'll give both of those links for you to go and check it out yourself. Pinterest won't let me post a Front Page Magazine link is there. I don't know if you know that, that there's certain um, social media applications that will literally not let you share information from certain websites. And, they, and their whole thing, of course, is always full of community guidelines they're protecting you because they're your mommy and daddy. That's what I'm talking about, that slave mentality. You actually believe these people are doing this to protect you. Well, what they're telling you is you can't decide for yourself. You have no individual sovereignty. We can live your life better than you, so just listen to us. Then we have Breitbart, Louder with Crowder. Now, the thing I like about uh, Steven Crowder, whether you think he's abrasive, whether you like his com comedy or not, he will always give you the sources to everything that he does, right? I can click on the sources and I can go to any of his segments and click on it and he will provide all the links, everything that he talks about, he'll give it to you. How many people do that? How many people on the left do that? Does TYT do it? Do they? Does MSNBC do it? Does CNN do it? Do they give you all the links? Every single one of them? Whether it's, or, or do they only cherry pick those that are going to support what they're trying to tell you, right? So this is what you have to ask yourself. Is truth more important to these people that I'm listening to than their own ideology? Because if it isn't, then you have to take that into consideration when you're listening to what they say. Then we have daily veracity, headline news, CNN, and as you see, the debates just happen. So you're seeing a lot of um, a lot of things on the debate. So once again, you should go to CNN, listen to what, or, or read or listen to what their take is on the debate. Go to you know Crowder, go to Prager, go to Daily Wire, go to AP News, you know all of those places. Speaking of AP News, there's AP News right there. There's Daily Wire. There's Daily Beast. Daily Mail. And we're going to end off with MSNBC. Now, I, of course, can could show you, you know, NBC, ABC. I can add those in as well. But you guys get the picture, right? You get the picture. So I go to all those different places. And then sometimes I'll, I'll type in keywords like shootings in Chicago last week. And so that's going to go a lot of most of the time. <laughs> and this is ridiculous, but most of the time, they're all gonna be local stories. Even though they could be horrific. They could be mass shootings. There's mass, there's mass shootings there weekly, but they don't talk about it. Not, not on the national level. So unless, unless the story is advantageous to push their agenda, because as I said before, the truth is not what matters to these people. What matters is winning, is pushing forward their agenda. And their agenda, of course, is to keep you a slave 
so that you're willingly staying on the plantation so they can rule over you. They just want to rule over you because all they want is money, power, and status. That's it. That's all it, that's all it is too. Right? As they say, they have a God-shaped hole in them and they fill it with money, power, and status. <laughs> and so that's what they fill it with. You know, I, I have a better recommendation of what they can fill the God-sized hole with, but, you know, I, I get sequestered off to the side because my message, to, <laughs> they don't want that to be the prevailing message out there, right? They don't want my truth, excuse me, they don't want the truth out there countering their lies, their propaganda. I mean, that's just, that's just the truth, just the way it is. And everybody that's been censored knows this to be true. No matter what side you're on, you know when you're censored and you're like, wait, the community guidelines says this, but that's not what I did at all. And then you ask them, hey, what part of my content violate it, you know, specifically, and then they don't respond because it wasn't a conversation. They just don't want that truth out there. And then of course, six months later, then they acknowledge that it was true, but they don't go back and apologize or take your strikes off or, or put your channel back up because they're playing the long game. They only have to subvert the truth for, for a particular period of time because they know they have other distractions going on. So by the time the, that they have to acknowledge that yes, it was true, they just distract you someplace else. The truth is over here and they go, oh, look, look over here, look over here, look over here. And they've been doing that for forever. <laughs> but what I encourage all of you guys to do is you, you have to take a bit of time to at least, if nothing else, at least determine is who I'm listening to, is where I'm getting my information from. Is truth a priority to these people, to these sources? That's not to say that they don't make mistakes and can't make mistakes, that's not it. But is the truth the number one priority even over their own ideology, even over their own political affiliations, even their own sexual preference, their, their own status, no matter what it is? the job, whatever it is, is the truth more important? Because if it isn't, then they're a part of the problem. And you need to defend yourself from their lies. And the best defense is going to be truth. And as I told you before, what is truth? Truth is God. Which is why Christians are mocked incessantly. This is why you have all this rise in anti-Semitism. They don't want, they hate Christ. So of course they're going to hate God's chosen people. It's just true. If you step back and you actually, and truth matters more to you, it's just true. It's just the way that is. You, you cannot like it. You can feel offended by it. It doesn't matter. It's still true. And that has to be the priority. I'm going to leave you with this. This is a great quote coming from Thomas Sowell. And this is what I'm leaving you with because this basically sums up why I research the way I do and why I'm encouraging you to do the same because I actually respect you because I actually want you to be included. <laughs> I actually believe in diversity of thought as long as it's undergirded by truth, right? And he says this, if you want to help someone, you tell them the truth. If you want to help yourself, you tell them what they want to hear.